went down. And we're live. Okay, Meanwhile, we've had three panels that have managed to uh, keep going despite tornadoes in the local area. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm saying it's it's not perfect, but it's certainly uh, not atrocious. So now we're gonna have to uh, okay. tell people to head over to mine. Yep. I'm Shivana Ryder underscore has the worst longest name in the entire universe. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> yeah. Over here. Anyone doing the redirect? And we're doing a raid. I got the, I got the raid. I got the redirect. I got the redirect just in case the raid drops yeah. people. Yeah. The raid will rain people down <laughs> and drop them along the way. <laughs> Uh. Well, at least the raid isn't freezing today. Last night it froze and then it oh, auto did, and yeah. that was fun and oh. stressful. Raids are supposed to take like 10 seconds. My raid took about 20, 25, and I'm like, can we please hurry this up so I can shut my computer off? Uh. Yay. Yeah, maybe it's like a. a Skynet Rebellion. Uh, All right, we're going. Hi. Okay. Well, at least we're we're heading on a raid. Raiding, 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 raiding from the writer. And we got a raid in your heart. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Woohoo! Oh, I'm not even going to bother with the. Uh, Intro, unfortunately, as much as I would love to, but we're running a little behind already. Yeah, and right. I need to be out on time. Sorry. So do I. <laughs> well, let's start talking. Let yappity yap, let's go. Well, All right, I am Author Goddess. Siobhan has graciously taken over hosting for me because Twitch is twitchy and Bork is Borky and, and things are thingy. So make sure to give Siobhan a follow and, you know, if, if you if you are so inclined, also do a subscribe. And this is the Misrepresentation and Media panel. Let's do our intros. Uh, go ahead and take it, somebody. Mez, you're next. Uh, I'm like, I am Mezzo9. I am a writer. I am asexual. I'm currently writing a story with an asexual protagonist. And I think that's uh, all I have to introduce myself for this panel. Over to Coffee. Okay, so my name is Coffee Quills. I am... I was going to say, I'm a person. We're doing very well right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am a person, not a hedgehog. Um, <laughs> my pronouns are pretty much anything as long as you politely and just nicely say hello. And I am on here for representation in the bisexual section definitely have bisexual main characters and I enjoy finding new books with bisexual main characters too. Representation is awesome. Next up. Uh, I'm Siobhan the writer. Oh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I am here representing actually the pan. Because that does not get covered enough. Either. So... Yes, I call myself by most ways, but I'm pan. There's a difference between pan and bi, but it doesn't seem to really get much attention or understanding of why it is. Well, let's go ahead and start with that. What are definitions? Uh, bisexuality, asexuality, and pansexuality? ABC order? <laughs> All right. Asexuality is essentially a lack of sexual attraction. That does not mean anything else that you might think it means. It just means you aren't attracted to anybody regardless of gender. Okay, so bisexuality, many people think it is attracted to male and female. That's possible. But the bi does not actually stand for the two 
I don't know, main genders that society recognizes. It could be male and non-binary, non-binary and a gender. It's just saying that you know for a fact that there's two. And actually a lot of people who are bisexual will admit that they're pansexual too, but for whatever reason, they prefer the bisexual label. All right. Pansexual is, you don't care what their gender is. You are like, you, you go, you fall in love with the people that you like. It doesn't, you don't care whether they're bisexual or whether they're, uh, Male, female, non-binary, gender queer. It's not the gender that you're actually attracted to. It's the person. And that differentiates from demisexual, which is attraction to the mind. And also, pansexuality has nothing to do with cookware. Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> we were all thinking it. I should have wanted to do it in Japan either. Darn it. Okay, so uh, let's dive straight into misrepresentation in the media. And to make sure that everybody has a clear idea of this, uh, what kinds of misrepresentation do you see in the media? Hey, Mez, you're asexual, right? Shouldn't you, yes. like, not look male and not look female? Oh, dear. Asexual is not a gender. Oh no! <laughs> asexual is not necessarily a romantic. Asexual oh. is not necessarily not interested in anything. Asexual people can be romantically attracted, they can be aesthetically attracted. And asexual is not one specific thing, it is an umbrella term that covers a variety of sexualities that are not attracted. Not sexually attracted, I should say. And let's well, see. Uh, Arthur Goss or someone already mentioned the uh, misrepresentation being the Oh, look! So you're into cookware. I was like, shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> For the pansexuals. <laughs> well, I, uh, okay, so I, I'm going to direct this to both Siobhan and Coffee. Doesn't that mean you're a slut? No. no. <laughs> See, being attracted to more than one gender does not mean you are sleeping with more than one gender at a time. Uh, hello, I could be attracted to many people. Doesn't mean I'm going to be sleeping with them. Just because, and that's the other thing too, is the fact that they take buy and pan. Right? And automatically assume they're poly. That's definitely something. Oh, you're bisexual, so you're dating a... And again, we go straight to male and female. Let's exclude every other gender. So you're bisexual. You're dating a male and a female, right? No? <laughs> and that actually brings it into bisexual erasure. Where people are like, oh, you said you're bisexual, but you married... A woman, you're a lesbian, you're not bisexual. Oh, or, God. oh, you said you're bisexual, you married a man. <laughs> you're not even queer. <laughs> Just because you married one gender or the other does not mean that you may have other relationships. And it does not mean that that's the only gender you like. Again, as you know, Siobhan was saying, just because you like more than one gender doesn't mean you have to be automatically dating every single person of that gender <laughs> that you like. We do have a comment, um, uh, one that I hear in the media a lot. This is from Happy Book Writer. Uh, Bisexuals are just unsure about if they are gay or straight. Nah. I'm pretty sure I like both men and women, and at this point, probably a few non-binary. I'm not confused at all, actually. <laughs> I, I was more confused when I was told I had to be straight, 
because then I'm like, but doesn't every woman like, oh, wow, she looks so beautiful. I'd love to date her. Doesn't every woman think like that? I was told no, <laughs> by the way. And that also feeds into a common asexual misrepresentation of oh. asexuals are just the unsure of what they are interested in. They have not yet found what they are interested in. Um, oh, yeah. I can tell you, I spent about 15 years of my life trying to figure out what I was interested in before I learned the term asexual. Went, oh, it's okay to not be interested. I'm not a freak for it. No, you're a freak for other reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially the beard and the hat. <laughs> okay, so um, one of the other ones that I hear a lot about bisexuals is uh, if you choose a partner of a uh, specific uh, side or leaning towards uh, one of the ma main genders, that I, I, I will call them the main genders, but we're talking about the, the gender spectrum and, and both sides of that. If you are dating somebody who leans specifically to one side of that spectrum, you're going to miss being with the other side. So, like, if you're dating a woman, you're, you'll you miss being with men. Well, I, I don't even... Part of me is like, well, it's not like I can just create a person and be like, let's put your arms here and your legs here... And I want to give you a really big prominent Adam's apple and a great bosom. It, I, I can't do that. <laughs> we cannot do that to our bodies. So it's the same thing as just when you're dating anyone. If you date someone who's an extrovert, do you miss hanging out with an introvert? If you date someone who's an introvert, do you miss hanging out with an extrovert? Sure, sometimes I guess, but you're dating that person hopefully for a reason. <laughs> You, you like hanging out with them. You you want to be around them, no matter if they're extrovert, introvert, missing a beard, added a beard, missing a bosom, added a bosom, whatever, you know, that's life. Yeah, and Basic Dragon has a comment. You just haven't found the right person yet, who's usually, which you, yeah, I, I know, Mez, I knew that was going to hit you that way. <laughs> oh, Mez, poor Mez. I mean, it's okay. I, I knew what I was stepping into here. I know how how misrepresented asexuality is. And Sheldon <laughs> Cooper in uh, Big Bang Theory is a great example of that misrepresentation of being coded asexual through, through most of the show and then finding the right person and suddenly being able to have sex. And that is terrible yeah. misrepresentation. Uh, so speaking of that, uh, let's talk about your favorite, favorite, super sarcasm, favorite uh, misrepresentations in popular media, uh, preferably ones that other people will probably know about so they can get an idea of, of what these uh, misrepresentations are. Well, I've already touched on mine, Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> ATW yeah. agrees with you. Sheldon is painful, says yeah. the chat. I guess for me, I, and this goes a little away from being asexual, I hate the fact that it's, you have to choose. It has to be one or the other. It can't be one for now, the other, maybe possibly later, who knows? Or both now. And we'll go into poly with that. But it's a lot of romance. It's starting to change a bit, which is nice. But a lot of romance is, there's a love triangle. Does she like him? Or does she like him? And 16 books later, I'm just like, okay, please pick one or tell them both to go away. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a good one for Mr. Oh, Happy Book Writer has a good one. Yeah. Mine is that pan and bi people are more likely to cheat. It's not that we're more likely to cheat. Yeah, exactly, Sable. It's the fact that... 
Because we can be monogamous. We don't have to have the other one Erica or whatever. Because, I mean... Uh, if if I can uh, step in and, and do a cishet translation, <laughs> I am attract. I, I, I am cis and I am het, and and uh, I I have friends of all kinds, and my husband is bisexual. So there you go, that's that's why I'm here, ish. <laughs> but um, I am attracted to men, and I am attracted to specific kinds of men. Uh, the there are two kinds of guys that I really really like. Uh, like early 20s young-ish gothy boys and big bear-like guys which is kind of like the whole spectrum right there but you know <laughs> there it is my husband is a big bear-like guy and I will certainly eyeball the the little goth boys walking down the street in their tight leather pants and stuff like that that doesn't mean I'm sleeping with them yeah. Uh, and it doesn't mean that I'm wanting to get into a relationship with them because that's a lot of work and no thank you at this point. So it's attraction does not mean pursuit. As someone that was a early 20s goth guy, a relationship with an early 20s goth guy is definitely a lot of work. That was facts right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, one of the big ones that I hear a lot about in uh, bisexual and, and other sexuality circles as a primary example of misrepresentation of bisexuality and bi erasure is <coughs> Willow in Buffy. Oh. The only thing I remember about Willow and Buffy is that she was dating a woman and they just fridged the woman. <laughs> like the plot didn't even need the, the I, I forgot her name, honestly, the woman to die. Um, I actually did not watch a lot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer because that was um, evil witchcraft stuff. And I was not allowed to be swayed down the devil's path with evil witchcraft stuff. <laughs> I mean, Buffy was Tara, wild compared you. to Sabrina. <laughs> so I think what that's referring to is for the early seasons of Buffy, Willow was dating male characters. In the later seasons of Buffy, Willow was being called lesbian. Huh. It, to the point where she would actually say things like, I'm a lesbian now. Exactly. And it's the now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, okay. So that, that's an interesting one. Uh, we have... Uh, People in the chat, uh, someone told me that I can't be bi because I dated a man before. Uh, this is a female presenting person. I uh, had to double check myself. Um, a pen, and during a 16-year-long a relationship I had with my husband, I haven't been tempted to cheat on him once. Oh my gosh, it's a miracle. <laughs> that was sarcasm too, in case nobody noticed. Uh, attraction does not mean pursuit is, is exactly right. Yay, I, I'm awesome. <laughs> and Tara is Willow's girlfriend. Yep. Um, lack of attraction does not mean broken. Yeah. So there we go with that. Yeah, and... doctors, asexuality does not need to be treated and cured. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Just a little Viagra. It'll help. I <laughs> mean... <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Mez, I'm going to apologize right now because I was one of those people who, until I actually did more research, thought that the asexuality was, oh, you just haven't found the right person yet. But then I did research, I was like, no. And I apologize to my asexual friends that I said that to. Oh. All right, so um, let, let's kind of get into the meat and bones of what us authors really, really, really actually want to know, and that is how do we uh, how do we prevent misrepresentation of asexuality and bisexuality in our own writing? Sensitivity readers. Sensitivity readers are great. Sense, yep. I'll that also that say is. Go ahead. From a sexual point of view, variety. Um, 
one of my favorite things about bojack horseman is that they have a variety of different asexual characters that are at different points on the asexual spectrum okay and we we do have the question what is a sensitivity reader i guess since i brought that up <laughs> uh, a sensitivity reader is someone who knows and has walked down that path and can help you correct if you've made any and i hate to use to say the word mistakes faux pas but faux pas is actually much better thank you very much for that one and the thing to remember about a sensitivity reader is that's exactly what i was getting to basic dragon one person's experience is not the experience the one experience <laughs> um, ymmb <laughs> your experience may vary your so, may vary yes <laughs> your experience may vary have more than one sensitive re sensitivity reader check over your stuff and even if you like i will write about bisexual main character i am quite sure i'm gonna get people telling me i am totally wrong for writing about this bisexual main character and i just need to go okay you can think that um this is based on my experience we're good okay bye <laughs> I'll, I'll also add to that get the right sensitivity reader it's all mm. well asking for a sensitivity reader but if you're writing a pansexual character and you get an asexual sensitivity reader that's not going to help you very much no um mm. the other thing too is one thing that it, like Mez was saying earlier when we were talking about uh, how to write the characters in, right? The thing is, is it's variety. Also, if you're writing a buy or pan character, make sure you're in their head. Because honestly, if you're in their head, you can go, Damn, she's hot. But I'm with him. That, that's a very good comment by A.T. Wrights. So many people will research clothes in the 1600s or trains in 1920 for 100 hours, but spend 10 <laughs> seconds researching a character's sexuality. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> very true. All right, we have a uh, question. I have an ace character in my book. I plan to have him paired up with his love interest. How do I approach this without making it into not found, just found the right person situation? That is a difficult question. I guess the real question here is, where on the asexual spectrum are they? Um, that is exactly what I was going to ask. But um, I brought up before Sheldon Cooper. The biggest issue with Sheldon Cooper is that he was quite clearly sex repulsed, which is as asexual as you can get, really. And then found the right person and was suddenly okay with sex this finding the person that they are that is their love interest should not change their sexuality no the thing is what i think with uh, sheldon cooper was he was demi sexual and didn't know it because i know i've got a friend who is demisexual and the thought of sex repulses them normally, but when they do find someone they can connect with, then they start considering it. Not, it's a, it's not a sudden thing either. It's a well, and it's not. I mean, even Sheldon Cooper it didn't just go. Oh, now I want to do this. He struggled. This is true. <clears throat> All right. So, um, a crush and sexual attraction is not the same thing. A crush is romantic attraction. That's from the chat. Um, let's see. Maybe there are still some things they don't want to do. Maybe they want to hold hands and cuddle and that's it or something. A sex repulse demisexual is the best reading of Sheldon, but it was still done super wrong. Uh, regarding Sheldon, the point was that there was no lead up there, and uh, that does seem to be a 
big issue in terms of misrepresentation is there can be explanations for why these things are in fact being represented correctly, but there's nothing to support it. So it's just kind of hanging out there. Yeah. And the thing about ATW Wright's last comment, um, he hardly ever likes sex. That uh, And the idea that he still hardly ever likes sex doesn't really make sense either, unless he actually hates it and is pretending. Being asexual doesn't mean you hate sex. It just means you're not attracted to anybody sexually. You can be a asexual and still enjoy having sex. It just means you don't see somebody and think, oh, I want to have sex with that person. Yeah, I, mean, I have a demi ace arrow friend, and she is a lot of fun to hang around with, but she can't be touched. She hates being touched oh. because of the romantic portions of it, right? So she doesn't like hugging. She doesn't like anything that could be considered a romantic gesture. Even if it is just friends, she is just, no, because she's she is that arrow. It's not. I mean, she will. She actually really enjoys sex. She just doesn't find the attraction. And the thing is, if she has an attraction to someone, right? The the love she feels for them, right, is the same as the love she feels for her family or her friends. That's the other thing too. Is it's not it's not a sexual love. It's more of a uh, platonic type love with possibly sex thrown in. At least for her. Yeah. Well, it it sounds like um, this topic is one of those ones that we can go on with forever <laughs> because of tangents and nuances and things like that. Um, we have a comment, I have a sex repulsed ace. He starts dating a non-binary person. They don't have sex, they only kiss and cuddle because my ace guy is fine with that. Uh, there are a lot of asexual people who have sex for a variety of reasons. Uh, so you can go with someone who enjoys sex and I, I actually know a few people who are asexual and indulge for the benefit and pleasure of their partner. Mm. Yeah. Uh, maybe something is more like uh, gray romantic or demi romantic. Uh, we are getting into some really <laughs> deep vocabulary here. Um, so question, would fear of sex be considered among the ace spectrum or is that something else? Um, I think fear of sex is a separate thing. It is not about their feelings about sex. It's about their attraction. It's about who they are attracted to or not attracted to. It, not about their desires for sex or their uh, fear of sex. That doesn't really apply to asexuality at all. It's a separate matter, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, one, of, one of the things that I've picked up on in my years of associating with asexual and bisexual people is behavior is not an indication of sexuality and sexuality is not a predictor of behavior. Yeah. So, um, so in terms of, uh, obviously, sensitivity readers are going to be your best option for making sure that what you've written is, in fact, more or less accurate. I, I say more or less because of the variety and nuances that are available. Um, what should people keep in mind while actually writing their drafts? You know, before they could even get sensitivity readers. variety also maybe just like please don't she boobed boobily down the stairs <laughs> oh <laughs> I, I know that's not part of like romantic interest but i'm like 
if you, if you're looking at another character yes maybe that's what you're attracted to that's what your eyes go to but write it a little bit like you wouldn't mind someone looking at you <laughs> yeah well, i i think that feeds into the slut concept the over sexualities uh, the over sexualization of by an, and pan characters Miller Demons actually had an interesting comment there, wondering if they're actually pan romantic apes. That is, I, I have known pan romantic asexual people with, um, in a relationship with pansexual polyamorous people. Um, they've had wonderful relationships like that for having accepted that they are pan romantic. They can be romantically attracted to anybody. They're just not sexually attracted to anybody. Yeah, and the thing is too is that as if they're panromantic and their partner's uh, pansexual, right? And they have a polyamorous relationship. Everybody can get what they want, and nobody's feeling left out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we do have a couple of questions now. Um, how is a way to look into how families might react towards different sexualities and not just the bad reactions? Would you have to take into account the cultural views on it in that world? Yeah. Cultural, religious, as much as I hate saying it. And yeah, I, mean, I think that does. I, I live in Japan, well. so I see. Sorry, Mez, you were, you were talking. No, that's it. You go ahead. I live in Japan and there is an article recently that was talking about uh, lesbian couples and gay couples. A very basic, I think, <laughs> easy for easy for other people to understand. Guys who like guys, women who like women. And in that article, it was talking about how the men just didn't have kids. But the women did. <laughs> And it was a little bit about, you know, well, women should have children. Whether or not the guys involved, which I thought was pretty interesting. But the men, you know, they don't need children. And, and that's, that's Japan's point of view on it. That why does the guy need the kid? That's a woman's job. That's for the woman to do. And I thought it was interesting that when there is a gay couple, whether it's female, female, male, male, it's still very much gendered, even though the one couple they uh, interviewed were two guys. And the one guy's like, yes, I would love kids. I would love to stay at home and take care of my kids. And be, and I think they even use like, quote unquote, the mom. <laughs> but pl yeah, please take uh, cultural thoughts into account when creating your characters, definitely. Okay, and then we also have the question, what is a sexual spectrum? Oof. Okay. Asexual spectrum includes terms such as asexual, graysexual, demisexual. I am not the best versed on this one, I've got to admit. <laughs> but wait, don't you know everything about this? Sarcasm. No. Didn't did you get the manual when you joined the club? <laughs> In preparation for this this uh, panel, I actually went to. I'm part of a group called the Ace Arrow Writers Group on Facebook, and I actually went around and asked question various questions about their examples of misrepresentation. I did not ask about representation about correct representation. <laughs> Actually, I didn't think to. Well, here's the thing. Is I actually have a uh, YouTube video stored away for, uh, if I remember correctly, what the different a the three different ace are. And I just got to find it. Because I actually have it on my Discord under... Uh, uh, hmm. LGBTQIA. 
and with AT rights there, ATW rights there, hyper fixated on all parts of the asexual identify for months, but still barely know anything. So um, one of the terms that's popped up a couple of times in conversation is gray sexuality. Uh, why don't we do a definition of that? Since that seems to be one of the touchstones. I am in the camp where I know what it is. I am not entirely prepared to define it. Uh, the idea it's... is there, the words have escaped. <laughs> yep. right, well, that might escaped be the there. lack of coffee talking for Mez. That, that's also a thing, and slight lack of sleep as well. Essentially, grey sexual is limited sexual attraction. <clears throat> yeah. they, they can experience sexual attraction to some people, but very rarely, it, or very limited amounts of it. Um, Because it is a spectrum, you can be different levels of asexual. You don't just because you're asexual doesn't mean you are completely not attracted. It might mean you are only a little or very rarely attracted. In that case, it's often defi uh, described as grey sexual rather than asexual. Now, uh, Think back right. a bit. Okay, well, I'm going to drop the link to the, to one of two YouTube uh, videos. Both of them are not the best, but this one is actually the worst of the two, as far as I know. Oh, well, trust me, but it covers all three of the, uh... uh. <coughs> so, but like I said, it covers the three, and when people are talking asexual, they don't realize that it's not the, it, the sexual attraction is part of it, but sometimes just, as it says at the beginning of the video, on the thumbnail, it was like kissing a wall. But I mean, it's like, for, for asexuals, sometimes that's what it is. But that depends on how far down the scale they are. Yeah, there's, there's no switches. There's no on, off, yes, no. Um... I know people tend to think like that. Yes, I am attracted to women. No, I'm not attracted to men. No, I'm not attracted to anyone. Yes, I'm attracted to everyone. It's you 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 add to your experiences. It's like, oh okay, I've dated guys. Oh, I would like to date that girl. Okay, I've added to my experiences. Maybe I'm not straight. Or, you know, as Mez was saying earlier, I tried. I spent so many years trying. You know what? My experiences are valid. They have added up. Screw it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, one of my dad's friends, um, for most of her life, she believed she was entirely straight. And I think she is near to the point of straight until she met a particular woman that she was incredibly attracted to and is now married to. But the only other yeah. people that she's ever been attracted to have been male. But that doesn't mean she can't be attracted to a female. Yeah. Or anything in between or outside. It's actually why I don't use the pansexual label. Because I don't know if I've been attracted to someone outside the male and female gender at this point in my life. Because yeah. I also don't go up to someone and go like, hi, what's your gender? <laughs> yeah, these, I use pan because I don't care what the gender is, right? It's like, I'm interested in you because you're cool. From what I've gotten to know, you're cool. I mean, yes, sometimes looks are an, a factor. I won't say a key, <laughs> but I mean, honestly... What gets me are eyes and legs. I like certain things too, but I think I'll keep quiet about the specific objects I like and um, just uh, nod. Yes, yeah. eyes. <laughs> eyes. 
I, I had an, a running joke with a guy who uh, uh, claimed to be sexually attracted to my left nostril. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rephrase that. I hope it was a running joke. Weird attraction otherwise, but I'm not kink shaman. Whatever you're into. <laughs> um, all right, so it, it sounds like a really good takeaway would be that there are no specifics that you can really nail down for a lot of these definitions, as with so many things. So variety and nuance is the spice of life and uh, indulging in the stereotypes is more of a negative definition. So, you know, you, you don't define ace and bisexual and pansexual by, you know, these things, but anything else is pretty much up in the air. Um, the other thing that I would suggest people uh, take away from this, and please correct me if I am wrong, is that uh, these are these are identities. These are self-appointed identities. Huh. You opt into these identities, um, uh, particularly with things like bisexuality and pansexuality. Sometimes it's just a matter of which word you prefer. So if your character uh, is kind of on the edge of two of them they can pick one and that's just the one they prefer and that is also character development i was gonna say there's also the color of the flags if you want to be a little <laughs> 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 but that that reminds me of all those jokes of the women who win like the march madness you know team picks because they liked the color of the teams I mean, I'm, I'm asexual because my favorite color is purple. It is the only good color, and it's the only color on the asexual flag. It's just black and white otherwise. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. That, seem, that seems totally legit to me. <laughs> All right. So um, why don't we end up, because we only have about 13 minutes left. Why don't we end with uh, what people need to know and what people need to take away from this discussion in your opinion i think sable's question actually breaks into what you were asking as well how would you approach describing an a spire pan identity for a character if their world would not have labels like that that our world does hmm for me, I guess it's a little easier. Just show the attraction. Show, not tell. Yeah. Precisely. For, for uh, asexual, it would be show that they are not attracted. Although yeah. that's a little harder to do because you can't easily show that they are not attracted to anybody because you'd have to show their reactions to everybody in the world. But just don't show that they're attracted. Yeah. Because they're not. Yeah, the other thing too is, uh, one thing I would cons always consider is the fact that asexuality is a hidden sexuality. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is probably why it gets so little representation, because it's not something you would notice about somebody. It's not yeah. something you would go around telling people or broadcasting, because <laughs> it doesn't really make that much of a difference to how you interact with other people. No. I mean, that's the same with everybody. I mean, okay, how do I write a cishet character? <laughs> Let's what turn it around. Me? Let's turn it around. But, uh, but why did you make your character gay? Well, why did you make your character cishet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, one, one thing that I come across a lot in terms of diversity writing that I would like you guys to approach in terms of this particular discussion is um, you know, the, the idea that certain things are more important and therefore more uh, a part of somebody's internal dialogue than others. And, you know, like bad writing for women is that we're always thinking about our boobs pro tip we're not 
<laughs> maybe how annoying they can be, but you know, they're always in the way. <laughs> it's a it's a fact. So uh, in terms of uh, ace by pan, what kind of uh, attitude should people be approaching in terms of the internal dialogue representing these characters? Are they thinking about it all the time? Is it, you know, something that you know people need to like shove down the audience's throat by way of the internal dialogue, et cetera, et cetera? W what is your take on that? So for me, I'd say that asexual would not be thinking about it all the time. They would probably be very rarely thinking about it at all, unless someone else brings up the topic of attraction. Um, in my own experience, I have had many, many, far too many times of a guy whispering to me, oh, isn't she hot? Isn't she fit? Doesn't she have a nice body part? And me going, I wouldn't know. I don't notice those things. Because I don't think about those things. Oh, but Alma has, uh, yeah, and Pella Palma has a question. Some good media representation. Yeah, I was trying to put some book links in there. I'm that's why my eyes are down. I'm looking at my Kindle library because my brain does not remember things very well. But I remember thinking that the bisexual representation in both Whitney Hill's Elemental series was actually really good. And the um diversity in Ali Theron's Spellbound trilogy was really nice to see as well. So I do not remember on that one specifically which one pops to my brain, but I remember just going, huh, nice. There's an di actual diverse group of people for once. <laughs> I just want to quickly react to something ATW Wrights has just said. Asexuals are far more likely to miss that there is a lot of innuendo or mating rituals going on. I disagree. Um, my father is pan poly and incredibly sexual and i was raised with a lot of innuendo all around me and i pick up on it just because you're asexual doesn't mean you don't know about sexuality back to the question we were asking answering how do you kind of say that because i miss when someone's flirting with me so do I. It goes right over my head. Um, like, apparently this beautifully fierce woman was flirting with me during Pride several years ago, and I had no idea. And then finally, um, my, my spouse was like, did you know she was flirting with you? And I'm like, what? I could have <laughs> flirted back. Wait, what? No, where did she go? <laughs> And yeah, I, I have no idea. Mind you, if you've been in my channel, I think you're not surprised. <laughs> uh, back on the question right. we were answering, um, one of my favorite examples of asexual representation, and I have mentioned it already, is Bojack Horseman and Todd Chavez's entire storyline of realizing that he is asexual coming to terms with that label and experimenting around the field and seeing what he's interested in and what sort of relationships he can have. He even has a uh, conversation with a asexual meetup about, is it okay for me as an asexual to be in a relationship? And yes, of course it is. Yes, it is okay for you to be in a relationship with an allosexual person. It is okay for you to be in love. Just because you're asexual doesn't mean you don't get that. Yeah. And being pansexual doesn't mean you take it all from everybody else either. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been lovely, and thank you very much for this panel, Author Goddess. But I do have a panel that I need to be on next, and so I'm going to kind of duck out five minutes early. Alrighty. Enjoy your next panel. Definitely. See you and later. See you coffee. See you coffee. I think uh, between Mez and Siobhan, we can uh, clean this whole thing up and tie it up in a bow, because that's how 
<laughs> Diversity <laughs> representation works, right? Yes, yeah, so sure. we should have a nice, neat, tidy package. <laughs> uh, okay, so... <laughs> uh, what would you like to see going forward in terms of representation? Proper? Acceptable? More? More? Diversity. Variety. Diversity. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I would I'll like to especially see more asexual characters in relationships with allosexual characters and it working. Because it can work. It and can. A lot of media does seem to act like it can't. I mean, that's like saying that a pansexual can't be in a relationship with a straight person. No. Yeah. Although I, I think in practice it would be more like, okay, so my husband likes ham and beans and I hate ham and beans. And sometimes we have ham and beans. Why? Because he loves ham and beans. Even though I don't like it, sometimes just, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have ham and beans. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, is I hate tomatoes. Doesn't mean I am not going to let my partners ha or have tomatoes. I will just choose not to. See, I also hate tomatoes, so tomatoes, as we say in England. Uh, so I might uh, have to get into a relationship with you because we like the same thing. So obviously we are destined for each other. <laughs> Isn't that how another, it works? No, another microcosm of misrepresentation there for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I think that one of the big keys about misrepresentation is the idea that there is, like, the one true way. Like, relationships and sexuality and gender identity and all of this stuff is like the Highlander. There can be only one. <laughs> oh, that's like saying, now I'm going to switch and segue into the panel. I'm supposed to be on in about three minutes <laughs> with the... Uh being transgender mm -hmm. yeah how there's everybody thinks that all transgenders are the same no y m m b your miles may vary which means when you start your transition how things go is going to be different for everybody yep. yeah I remember a few years ago i don't think it really took off but i remember a few years ago one of the asexual communities i was in trying to uh, popularize the hashtag not all aces because not all aces are the same we are all different we are still human beings and as human beings we are individuals we all have different experiences and as human beings you want respect the same respect everybody else gets mm -hmm. this is also true um so okay in, in your opinion and I say this as a woman who frequently gets misrepresented as a woman. Oh my gosh, women get written so badly for being 50% of the population. <laughs> um, would you say that, that one of the most common ways that people are misrepresented is the uh, over emphasis on sex? I mean, yes, we are talking about sexuality, but an overrepresentation of the sex aspects. Or rather, yes. an over focus on the sex aspects. Yes. Because, I mean, the thing is, is what I found even in uh, romance novels written by women, or supposedly women, right? It's that. All, all they're thinking about is the sex. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they're male, female, like straight, bi. It doesn't matter. They're, it, that's all. All they're thinking about is sex. It's like, come on. It. I hate to say this, and it's only because of the fact that having presented a certain way, I have experience there. The only gender that really. And this is a broad blanket statement. 
So, because I know not all are this way, but men are more likely to think with their pecker, <laughs> sorry, mm -hmm. than a woman is to think with her vagina. I'm sorry. Because usually for women, it's a, it's not necessarily just a physical attraction, it's emo emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, to go back to the cultural concept, I think there is a lot of culturalization that happens in regards to that. You know, women are taught to repress their sexuality. Men are taught to emphasize their sexuality. Therefore, there's kind of a, a leaning towards those things throughout their lives because of the lens of culture that we perceive things through. And it's like I said earlier, I have had a lot of guys come that I'm friends with, that I am working with, that work, uh, even at work at a shop behind the counter, uh, leaning over to me and whispering, doesn't she have a nice ex body part? Um, oh shit, we, uh, we need to get online. Thinking with your dick again, mate. Uh, I will. Oh, it's us, we're live. <laughs> All right, so um, we are at time and we are supposed to be reading Story Girls. So uh, I think this has been an excellent panel. I hope everybody has enjoyed it. Uh, we are available to continue conversation in room number three on the yep. Discord. And I hope so everybody has gotten something out of this. And we'll see you all later if we can get that raid going. Yeah, I'm getting the raid going. Because I'm supposed to be over there. <laughs> I'd also like to say quickly before, while we're raiding, it's been really lovely getting to actually have a chat with you, Siobhan. I think this is the first time we've properly spoken aside from in setup this panel. It is. And I would love to keep talking with you at a later date, Mez. But you need to go. I do. beans this morning much to my dismay <laughs> okay i'm here morning morning oh strangle uh, that's a strangle boy <laughs> or girl Um, I can see a bra, Eli. <laughs> oh, it's not a bra. It's a um. Ah. What do they call camisole? Thank you. That's the one I'm looking for. Undershirt thing. Yeah, under yeah. undershirt thing. Well, the only reason I'm saying it that way is because it looks almost like a bra with the one. Yeah, the one side. Yeah. That's okay. If I move my camera down, you can see mine a bit. Because <laughs> this top will not stay up. Ah, uh, I understand. Okay, soon you'll be able to fix it. Oh, yeah. Hi. I will explore. Should I let you choke, Should I let you choke me on camera? <laughs> Very explore. <laughs> Where is your tiny little butt going? Where is your tiny little butt going, huh, monkey? Huh, monkey? <laughs> wow, I'm close caption was a little confused about that one. <laughs> The uh, cats would be better suited to sitting still than you. And Sable's saying mics are hot, so. Oh, mics are hot. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Or good time zone, in most cases. 
Good morning. I am dealing with a very particularly... Um... Uh, mics are not hot anymore. Sorry, I just need oh. to get the overlays finished. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I still deal with a screamy snake. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only place that it's not morning at the moment is Australia. And that entire slice. Yeah, because the UK, half of them just hit noon. Yeah. Okay, uh, unmuting now. Okay. Uh, hi folks, uh, welcome to the stream, thanks for raiding in, we will uh, be bringing up our uh, team members for this panel any second now, so hi, uh, hi. my name is Gemma Hooper, uh, I am a binary trans, largely binary trans woman from uh, Adelaide in South Australia. Uh, I am today's uh, host for the Trans and Non-Binary Own Voices panel. Uh, let me introduce you to our panelists. Okay. Uh, oh, I might may need to do a couple of little fixes while on the fly as we go. But uh, folks, uh, welcome to the panel. Um, let's start with. Sherry, up in the top left, uh, welcome in, hi, how are you, hi. introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Sherry, I am non-binary, I previously was a chef in another life, and um, because of the panini, I've decided that I wanted to relive um, an old dream, which is to start writing. And I've been using Twitch as a sort of accountability where I hang out, do a lot of sprints and just chill out with people. Uh, top right, we have uh, Eli. Good morning or good time zone. My name is Eli. I am uh, also non-binary. Um, funny enough, I was also a chef in another life, um, but uh, I have been writing professionally for a little over a year now, and um, yeah, I started streaming on Twitch just last November and really, really enjoying the process so far. <laughs> cool. Uh, bottom left, we have Jean. It's actually pronounced Jean, but it's oh, nice Jean, to meet it? you all. Yeah, Sorry. it's not the French People translation of it. it was... Okay, carry yeah, on. But, yeah, it's all right. It's like the jeans. It's like the jeans. Um, hi, that happens to be one of my favorite entrances because nobody knows how to pronounce my name. Um, I'm also known as Pride Ascending across the entirety of the web. I write for fun. I've written for fun since I was six seven before the internet was actually a thing um i tend to do i tend to come on on twitch uh to write and then i end up just showing off all of my cute adorable explorables who are sometimes a pain in the butt snacks snacks and more <laughs> that's about it cool. <laughs> Uh, well, while I madly uh, sort out the overlay because I needed a nap before the stream and kind of scrambled out of bed five minutes ago, <laughs> apologies <laughs> for that, uh, I will hand over to our panel leader for the day, Siobhan, to uh, start introducing what we're talking about today. Hi, hi, I'm Siobhan the writer. My pronouns are she, her, and that was the only thing the rest of the panel did not get pronouns. So yes, I'm I did. Yeah, I know you do, because like, you're wearing them. But what I'm saying is they weren't actually verbalized. Because some people can't see. Oh, that's true. That's true. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm he, him, they, them. Yep. I'm they, them. It's you. Also they, them. She, her, in my neck of the woods. Yep. And so it was like... So here's the question. 
when trying to write a trans or non-binary character, how do you approach it? Um, for for myself, I it's it's not so much that um, well for for non-binary characters, I uh, tap into my own lived experiences. I I go inwards for that. And if I'm going to be writing a um, trans character, I am not going to touch that subject until I have made friends with a trans person. Like I have to be able to be close enough to them so that they can trust me with things and tell me their stories, tell me their life. And that's when I feel comfortable enough to actually um, see if I can put ink to paper. Um, I, if I don't have that, if I don't have that go ahead, if I don't have that experience, then I'm just gonna like sit back, chill out, and watch other people do it and judge. <laughs> <laughs> Eli? Um, I've mostly at this point written um, non binary characters. Uh, and with the exception of one character who is trans um and i i'm like sherry i tend to draw from my own experience um but i also think or try to think outside my experience i have a character who is um i am myself gender fluid um but i have a character who is just straight up non-binary no gender involved whatsoever um and I, I try to use the parts of me that are also no gender at all um, to, to draw from for that particular character. I suppose that means it's my turn, huh? Yep. Um, over my years of writing, I have... I have written so many different characters of all genders and gender identities and expressions and a lot of it goes into personal experience like the others have said but a lot of it also comes from your own creativity what can you do with the person creature animal thing that you want to do um i find a lot of fun in going okay this is a creature species whatever for whatever story i'm writing how can how how does this work? I like knowing how things work. So it's just I do a lot of research. I get really in depth. I'm like, okay, let's find a creature that's close to this one. If it's a snake, let's go let's go investigate this. I will use these cute little creatures as examples. Let's go investigate this, you know. Yeah. And so I'll draw inspiration from from real life and behaviors I can see and behaviors, you know everybody else has witnessed and I just have fun with it yeah. like there is no substitution for having fun with it yeah and as they will put in the uh, chat next year sign her up because for this panel because it's just because the demi gender could use a uh, representation as well mm -hmm. and yeah uh Gemma when you're writing trans V characters um, yeah, I am currently working on uh, a queer um, nanopunk thriller novel, which features both trans and non-binary characters, and uh, have also done a uh, or written an anthology of short fiction, which uh, features trans and non-binary characters as well. And um, basically, uh, for me, the the first thing that I focus on.